I promised to be live at two, and here we are. Um, I'm going to be live in a second with Raj Sharma of Brahma Property and R Print as well. Um, Raj will, I'm sure, mention that. Um, I'm just going to wait until I know that people can actually see us before I do anything else. And once I know that we are live, oh, that's good. LinkedIn's telling me we're live, so I can press that button as well. Um, I can do that. Um, I always do a couple of things in the background. I'm aware that you can't see me yet and you can't see Raj yet, um, but as soon as I... Um, as soon as I get some comments, as soon as I know that people are here, I'll bring us on screen. If you are watching, um, drop me a comment in the comments below and I'll bring your comment up on screen and we'll answer it. Um, or just say hello or whatever suits you. Let me put me on screen so you can see me there. That's, um, I don't know if that's better or worse for you. So I'm going to be talking to Raj Sharma live here on LinkedIn about property investing, about the turbulence in the market at the moment and about why that means you should think carefully about your property investment. I've talked to Raj loads before um, and always enjoy talking to him. Um, if you've got any comments about anything that we're saying, if you want to question us, if you want to challenge us, if you want to ask Raj anything about property, if you want to ask both of us anything about networking at all, pop them in the comments below and we'll answer them live on screen. I'm gonna bring Raj on. Um, there you go. Oh, everything's working so far, Raj, which I'm really pleased about. It's been, what, five or six months since I talked to you last, so I've done a bit of an introduction just for the benefit of the people who are just joining us. Just let us know who you are and what you do, Raj. Yeah, uh, thanks, Steph. So uh, my name's Raj Sharma. I um in the main run a design and print company based in Warwickshire we're coming up to 20 years of running that um, but um, a few years ago so maybe about about six or seven years ago I started um, investing in property uh, which yeah, and I always say started investing in property properly uh, in that I created a property uh, investing business I'd always been involved in it previously uh, with, with with parents uh, with my brothers but around five or six years ago I thought that uh, it would be a good idea to create a second source of income, something for the future. Because I've got an established business, I didn't need immediate income from the property. But um, so I started investing in property whilst running the print business and, and a trading business and the property invest, investing business worked very well for me hand in hand um, in that I could uh, carry on with the day because I'm passionate about both print and property and I want to carry on growing that business. Uh, but it works very well for me because I think one feeds the other. Uh, property is for the future, also a second source of income. And it came very handy actually during the, the pandemic, during the lockdown, because our business uh, didn't quite shut down, but we, we lost over 90% of business overnight because of lockdowns. And I was really thankful for a second source of income then. Uh, and, and that's really spurred me on to do two things actually. One is to uh, do more of the property, so start investing it even even further, uh, and 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 created a group uh, with joint venture partners as well. But also the other thing that started uh, I started doing this time was helping other business owners in my network. So I've got a, a vast network of, of, of both business and and property professionals, and I started helping them with getting started in uh, investing in property too. Yeah, you've already mentioned the word network. I'm just going to say hello to Kate, um, putting the glam into gutters. Um, thanks for joining us this afternoon, Kate. Um, and Salim, thanks for joining us as well. Um, it's good to see, but it's good to see everyone who's watching us at the moment. And if anyone's got any questions about anything that Raj is, is saying, and I just want to, I just want to sort of pick you up on something. So you've, you've got the successful print business. I know that that went quieter over lockdown, but mm. you you must have had to work out how to put structures in place, how to put systems in place, so that you can actually run the, the print business uh, alongside the, the property business. I, I can't imagine, I know how busy you are, so I can't imagine you were able to effortlessly slot the two together. You must have had to, to learn a lot about systems to do that. Yes, and I think that, um, you know, I always try to look for the, the silver lining in the cloud and try to sort of keep positive about things. And I think one of the things that happened during lockdown 
was an opportunity to do some more of these these systems and, and processes because we were quieter for a good six months i'd say so that was a real sort of godsend in terms of creating systems and processes because one of the things that i i was adamant on doing and I, and I said this to my business partner ralph as well i said that we need to carry on as business as usual even though it's not business as usual so we carried on marketing we carried on uh, we joined several groups um both uh, sort of um you know, online, but also uh, mainly sort of the online, there, there were a lot of online groups at the time, sort of networking groups, etc. So we joined a lot of them and carried on doing the uh, online stuff. But as a, um, a, a, as a uh, business that was allowed to carry on during the pandemic, we were allowed to uh, keep our factory open and um, because we were an essential service, we switched to working with more other essential businesses like for example in retail and in, and in property so we kept more in touch with those sort of companies as well and it all created a system and, and like you said systems and processes to a make our business better coming out of it but when i say our business i mean the print business but also created the time available to look uh, to spend more time in, in, in terms of the property business because the property business it, you know if you can break it down into sort of I, I break it down into three chunks. You know, you're always looking for uh, you're always looking for new deals. So creating new sources of people who can and uh, who can introduce you to projects and, and and deals. And the second part of it is analyzing those deals. And the third part is finding the money. So finding capital, whether that's through private individuals or whether that's through lenders. So that does require time. And yes, so I I use the time wisely during the pandemic to invest in those systems and processes that would enable me to free up time for the property business. I think that's it's something that, that lots of entrepreneurs learn, that if they want to scale in any direction, that putting systems and processes in, not to replace them, but just to free up some time to to scale the business, to grow the business, that's or, or even people who are employed who want to um, get promotions and that sort of thing, putting systems in place so that they can move on to the next level is is really important for people. For, for, for the people who've just joined us, I'm talking to Raj Sharma about property investing and whether now is the right time to, to invest in property. We've just started by talking about how Raj built systems so that he could continue to run his existing print business and build a successful property business on the side. On the side, I, I think that's the wrong expression because the, the two work side by side. Now, do you do you teach other people how to how to build those systems around their business, Raj? Because you've you, you've got a ton of experience as as a business owner. Yes, no, definitely. I think I think a big part of um, the I, I do some property mentoring and, and, and training, uh, it, and and I think a big part of that is trying to find out where you're where you spend your time and how to spend it more uh, efficiently. So that is probably the, you know, once when we start off and we start looking at goals and, and visions, I always suggest people create a default diary. Now I've got a default diary and, and to be honest, the first things that go in there are my network meetings. I know we're going to talk about networking uh, a bit later, but you know, I try to make a time every week for those networking meetings first and then the one-to-ones that, um, you know, we should be doing on the, you know, after the meeting, because, you know, the process of getting to know each other goes beyond the meeting, doesn't it? So I put those in my default diary. I have times for looking at emails, for looking at social media and looking at doing quotes. So I try to create a default diary. And then suddenly, once you start tracking your time and start monitoring where it's spent, you easily find those big times that, that aren't, aren't being used efficiently. And, um, I think that's a big part of the big part of the training really is and, and this is really the journey that I've gone through is that you know often you start looking at property investing and thinking that you know I want to sort of become a passive property investor I want to earn lots of money and I want to you know one of these horrible terms that um, floats around in, in the property world it is sack the boss you know people say they want to sack the boss like they want to leave the job you know it's a, such a dirty word they don't even want to say it <laughs> but, but I, I think totally opposite i think it's great to have a job and i think it's great to have a business because i think that will ultimately um fund and, and fuel the property business but not only that i think part of my training is to actually you know go from a place of 
hating that job or hating that business to to actually start loving it as i've done more i think in the last two years i've really started loving print more in the last couple of years after the initial great passion and love for it and then somewhere down the middle you start um you know you start getting a bit resentful sometimes as a business owner of, of that business because you think that i'm spending so much time on it i'm not getting the reward with you know um which is in in line with the amount of time i'm spending in it and i think often it's about that time issue it's not the actual business it's the actual time that you're spending in it inefficiently so a big part of of the training is looking at your time and how to um like for example at the start of this year my uh uh, aim was to uh, free up 30% of my time to devote solely to uh, property investing. And I think that during the years, at some point, I think towards half of the year, there was a flip on that where I was probably spending 30% of my time on the print business and 70% on the property as it needs more input and more time for myself. It's those systems and processes that have worked to flip that. And maybe at the start of the year or maybe at the start of a, a two years ago, I was thinking that I was, I, want, I wanted to get into property full time and just sort of either sell or just walk away from the business. But I think that would have been a massive mistake because there's so much potential, I think, in, in, in a lot of businesses if you, you know, have the right systems and process. And, and that's why people come in and take over businesses, don't they? They, they actively look for businesses that are up for sale or are struggling. Or, and, and they don't have a magic formula, it's just that they have a different vision for it and they have the systems and processes in place to um, get them back functioning at a better level. I think that's... Similar things happened over lockdown because so much of my income came from speaking and obviously I lost pretty much 100% of that in lockdown. I had to look for other things and now between the mentoring um that i do in in a corporate environment and running the, the network in a mentoring group connect and speaking it's really refreshing because i'm i'm doing different things every day so as well as having a bit more stability of income than just relying on the, the speaking income i've also got the fact that it's it's mentally it's great because i'm talking to you this afternoon i'll be talking to someone about the chemical industry tomorrow it, it 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 gets me moving about in my head which i really like so pick it up on on what we actually have titled this and, and what we said we're going to talk about there's there's quite a lot of chat about the property market at the moment there seems to be quite a lot going on out there what what do you think is happening whether that's in the midlands or or nationally in england what what do you think is going on with the the property market right now yeah I, i'm glad you said i'm glad you said that steph actually first of all you know what's happening in, in the midlands for example because i invest in um in birmingham and solihull so very specific parts of of west midlands which you know as you know birmingham is the se second city of, of the uk uh, you know there's lots of there's lots of things happening and, and, and people want to live here um and when we talk about general sort of property prices and and sort of increases and falls we tend to talk them on 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 a uh, you know on an average basis you know which is what's happening nationally so first of all i think that's very important to know what's happening within your area um because if that's the area that you've selected then you need to know as much as possible about that so but of course we we we're, we're suffering at the moment from um sort of national issues the, the, the first one being uh, interest rates so as you know inflation is um rampant and uh, the only real tool that um you know the powers of powers that be to have to fight inflation is is uh, bank of england base rate rises so they will continue doing that until you know they've broken the back of inflation you know they've, they've said that we're, we've, we've come to a three percent base rate um, but more than that, I think once you start getting into the, the, the actual um, realization of, of how mortgage rates, etc., are, are set, you know, you start realizing things about the bond market and, and swap rates and, and, and Sonia. You know, these are the sort of things that you sort of start looking at when you start digging deeper into it. And the turmoil that we had of, of, of the, um, uh, the last administration caused a severe spike in interest rates. Uh, that was mainly because of you know the lack of confidence in in, in the in the UK economy, 
by a, a big sell-off of bonds, etc., of, of uh, uh, which largely swap rates and bond rates they determine mortgage rates in the future in conjunction with the Bank of England base rate. So we've had rate rises, which has caused a lot of uncertainty at the moment. I was reading a Zoopla report recently. I think something like forty percent of, of of buyers have been put off and and, and have um, uh, decided to wait until. What, to see what happens and, and I've also seen locally uh, evidence of uh, deals falling through because the mortgages that people had arranged uh, you know often sometimes in, in principle have been withdrawn um, the rates have gone high which just means that they've not been able to afford and the stress tests have gone up as well so they've just physically not been able to afford the offers that they've been made so um, th there is a slowdown in the market and that is a real challenge for you know all property buyers really um, and and you know we entitled this chat today that should i still be investing in property because there is so much going on at the moment which would suggest that you shouldn't because a lot of people aren't you know um as i just said so 40 percent of people have changed their mind to uh, put off the decision until interest rates are more stable and to see if and, and of course there's there's the feeling that I'll be able to get a better deal next year when prices start falling. Um, so I see that as an opportunity. I see that as an opportunity for uh, property investors. So there'll be no, there'll be no shock uh, uh, from anyone to know that my answer is yes, we should still invest in property. Uh, but we need to understand the reasons why we should. We need to understand our local market. We need to understand what's happening and, and how it affects how it will affect me because what we see a lot of and, and this is what i was saying at the, at the start of your question we often look at things on on, on a uk-wide average we often don't look at how does this exactly affect me you know a lot of people are, are, are a lot of people that i speak to are clearly set you know saying things that the media say about you know the cost of living crisis yes there is a massive cost of living crisis yet you know you then sort of speak to them again a week later and they're on holiday. <laughs> so the cost of living crisis hasn't affected you that much, you know. Um, so um, I think we have to be careful uh, and, and but also look at our position and, and see what the reality is rather than what we hear. And I think everyone knows that in the stock market, for example, people make money in a fall-in market. I... I presume that's the case in, well, I don't presume that's the case. I know that's the case in the property market. I, I was an estate agent for 20 years. Yes. The, the serious investors, the serious buyers were, were still there, no matter what the market was doing, because actually they had a different plan to the sort of enthusiastic amateurs um, that, that their plan wasn't so reliant on the, the vagaries of the market, because the market... In property as well as in stocks and shares does go down as well as up to quote the um the small print that's, that, that's put on any investment you educate people to understand how to navigate their way through this is is, is that my understanding of one of the things that that you do absolutely yeah steph so uh, i think that the people that i do work with and and when we look at deals and, and we analyze sort of certain um uh the properties that they've come across that, that they've been introduced to by an estate agent and i've got to say that uh, you know whilst it's sometimes not the news that they want to hear i think i we go through and, and reject more of the deals than we will say yes that we should go for this one because i think that i mean i talk i'll give you an example i target myself to make four offers on properties every month so that's what i'm targeting as so i want to go and make four offers on on um uh, four different properties every month so some sometimes we do a little bit more or sometimes we do a little bit less but i have made coming up to 50 offers on properties um this year we're coming up to the end of the year so we made about 50 offers on properties now those offers have been based on my criteria i don't have the money to buy all of them but the fact the point is that i've got my uh, criteria that I want to work to and that criteria largely depends on you know having a great deal on the way in you know so you know there's a saying in property that you make your money on uh, you know when you buy it at the price you buy it 
rather than you know what happens afterwards. And so to give you sort of an idea of numbers, we have had three offers um, accepted and either completed or near completed this year. So out of 50, we've completed on three. So that's the sort of ratio that I'm very happy with because I wanted to add, um, you know, two to three properties this year, uh, as, as well as, you know, growing the print business. Um, and so when you asked about, is this what we teach? Absolutely. What we look at is, what are your criteria for buying the property? Uh, what sort of return on investment do you want to make on the, on the cash that you put in? What are your income goals? And what are your sort of uh, overall long-term goals? How does that fit in? And remember, if that doesn't fit in with the buyers or the estate agents' plans, then you walk away and, and you look at the next one. Um, and I think that's why I, I say that you should still invest in property. But now the criteria are different. You know, you have to work with what you've got. Interest rates are higher, so you need to put those into your uh, deal analysis. So what you might actually end up is... Um, adjusting your income and return on investment targets to reflect the current market. So you might have to go there and adjust them and say, look, things aren't as great as they used to be. So uh, we we want to adjust it accordingly. And I think the most important thing, and, and, and I'm going to uh, mention something that my dad said to us a long time ago. Um, we bought a, we bought a, a property in Solihull and uh, for, for us to live in. So that was our, 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 our residential home. Then that was in the late 90s, coming up to, coming up to which we didn't know at the time, but coming up to the recession of the early 90s. And we bought this property, I think it was about 125,000. And it went down to, I think, 95,000, uh, you know, a few months later during the recession. And uh, I remember my brother having a conversation with my dad. He said, Dad, he goes, this house price has gone really down. And my dad said, uh, do you want to sell it? And they said, no. And he said, well, that's all right then. <laughs> I, I, so, think that's, I, I think that's something that people do forget. I mean, a couple of things that you've said there, people forget things about the property market. That, I mean, something that, that, that people do need to bear in mind is that it's by law, the estate agent's job to get as much as possible for, for the house to, to, to achieve the highest possible price. But that's not to say that there aren't deals still out there, as you well know, because some people are very keen to sell and most of the buyers that you work with will have finance in place or have cash or whatever it happens to be. So they're very good, attractive buyers to someone selling. And that's the other thing. I'm, I'm guessing, although we, we haven't talked about it, that when you advise people to invest in property, you talk to them about the, the medium to long term because that will iron out the short term sort of vagaries of the market. Well, that's right, because, you know, first of all, I, I, I work with business owners who generally have a, uh, a source of income, so they're not reliant on an immediate source of income. It is a longer term plan that they're typically looking to do. I mean, a second source of income is great. And, I, I, you know, at the top of our chat, I said that it helped me a lot during the pandemic. But at the same time, it wasn't something that I, I needed before that or immediately need now. So it was a short term, short term thing it really is um, a, a longer term strategy that I help people with. And, and indeed for myself, you know, I, like I said, um, I, like, a, you know, d during um, like 60 seconds in networking, etc. what I always tell people is that I'm creating an intergenerational uh, property business, something that my kids will get involved in, take it further. And um, I'm just sort of starting this thing, really. I'd like to see, you know, go on for years and years and years, you know, a long time after I'm not here, but the, that bricks and mortar will still be here generating, you know, a, a revenue and, and, and income and, and uh, a little bit. More. I think what these things create is more choices, doesn't it? It creates more options in the, in the future where if um, I can certainly see my children uh, have been involved in the property business, giving them a little bit more freedom in terms of what their careers are going to look like. Um, I still want them to have, you know, great careers and, and, and create businesses and, 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 and uh, be in great jobs but i want them to have more choices i want them to have another interest and it is oh you've frozen on me raj you've frozen on me for a second what i'm gonna do i don't know whether you can still hear me but let's just take raj off the screen for a second in fact what i'll do until raj comes back if you're not connected with raj 
Um, that's where you'll find him. Um, that's where you'll find him on LinkedIn. I'm going to wait and see if Raj comes back. Otherwise, I'll keep talking. Um, if you've got any questions about property, even if Raj isn't here, pop them in the comments below and Raj will answer them when he comes back in. Um, but that's where you connect with Raj um, if you haven't already. Um, if you're not already connected with him, I'm just going to talk for a little while until I see whether Raj comes back. I'm just going to pop that on as well. That's the website, Brahma Property. .co.uk, spelt exactly as it looks on screen, where it tells you a load about Raj's property business and such exciting things as why invest in Birmingham, why it makes sense to invest in the places where, where Raj is based. So that's that. Let me pop me back on screen. If you're not already connected with Raj, I'm just going to, there's a link to connect with him. Um, I've just popped it in the comments down there um, and I'll talk for a little while as well. I'm going to see if Raj comes back um, and I'm going to do a couple of things on the screen whilst I'm doing so. Um, but I've shared where you can connect with Raj and I think our technical team of hundreds of people have gone and found him again. You froze, Raj, I'm afraid. Yes. We lost you for a second. Yeah, sorry about that. I don't I don't know what happened there. Suddenly I was talk, jabbering away and it said, uh, connection is lost. <laughs> but you're back. That's it. Yeah. And it, it just gave me a little second to talk to people about where to connect with you and I've given them a link. Um, so now Raj is back, by the way. If you've got any questions, pop them in the comments below. Um, I think there was something that... that, that I've been meaning to ask you because I can see why you go networking for your print business because obviously business people buy print so I can see how that makes sense but you also network really quite extensively for for the property business as well why why is networking important for property professionals because I can see networking in terms of people trying to build a career. I'm very involved in networking in terms of people finding other people who might want to buy what they sell. But just give us a bit of an insight into what networking looks like for, for property professionals. Yeah, so th there's there's two two different types of networking, uh, property networking that I, that I do that, that I'm involved with. For example, I'm a, uh, I'm a host of a, a, a property meeting. So um, there's a, there's a, a group called the Partners in Property Community, and uh, I'm um, a host of the Birmingham meeting. So um, you know, I used to go there on a month, uh, every month. So so it's it's a once a month daytime meeting. So I used to make the time to go that because you know you meet other people there who are doing things similar to you or slightly different to you, but you get sort of updates from experts. Uh, we have a monthly mortgage update. We have a Bank of England update. So it's really good to keep abreast of the latest developments and to find out what other people are experiencing, what they're doing. And it's really a source of inspiration and motivation for me, uh, if I'm honest, Steph, because, you know, you, you do sometimes feel lonely in the property world and, and, and think that, am I doing, what, what I'm doing, is this right? You know, um, it, am I doing the right thing? Should I be in creating you know, co-living properties or should I be doing serviced accommodation or should I just be doing single lets to families? You know, you, you, unless you start speaking to other people and getting the experiences of it, then you won't know. You know, you, you, you don't know what the return of investment should be, what other people are getting. And one thing I've found is that the property community is very, very giving. The, the, the groups that I'm involved in are very giving with information. You know, they're very helpful. So I think that's a major reason to be involved in, in, in uh, property networking. But what you've also got to remember is that just general you know, business people like myself, who, who, who I've got a print business, or you know, I could easily, the other people that I know, uh, IT consultants, accountants, dentists, you know, a, a vast array of different people who run businesses are also involved in property or want to get involved in property. So I think as a property investor, if I take my print hat off for a minute, as a property investor, um, general business networking is, is very, very important and often a trick missed by lots of property investors because they want to go to property events and they want to speak to other property people. But then they um, they miss out on speaking to the, 
the, the, the IT, a cloud-based IT person in, in, in my networking group who's got a, a portfolio of commercial properties you know, that they uh, have been involved in for many years. And um, my latest um, property uh, deal that we completed on last last week, in fact, was an introduction from my uh, BNI IFA. So the IFA uh, uh, texted me actually a few months ago and said, do you want to buy a flat in Solihull? My client is selling it. And uh, so that led to a conversation, it led to an offer, and uh, we completed that on it. So that wouldn't have come across if I didn't do general business networking. Uh, sources of funding. So I've got various uh, f uh, private funders because some people want to get involved in property, but they just want to do it passively. So they might make a loan to to, to my company for a, a return of uh, a fixed rate of interest and um, they get some insights into the program. But generally, they're trying to make their work, uh, uh, money work harder, often money that's been generated from their business. So um, general business networking is a great source of private funders and sources of deals, but also other property investors who've got a lot of experience over the years. You know, so I think networking is absolutely essential, absolutely essential for a property investor. And that's, I mean, you, you've hit on something really interesting then, which I, I've i sort of heard about, but had never given much thought. So you, you find people who want to invest in property, but I'm, I'm going to say they don't want to get their hands dirty if, if it's not too, um, if that's not too demeaning. They don't want to be the person who actually goes to the auction and, and, and finds a the property. They don't want to be the person who has to, to do the development, but they want to put their money in, get a return on that money. And, and how does that work? They, they share the return with the person who does actually do the, the, the buying and the development and, and so on. Is that is that no. basically how it works out? Well, the, the, the way that it works out is, you know, once you, once you get into the, the realms of sharing profits and sharing the outcomes of, a, of an investment, it's quite a regulated activity. So, uh, it, you know, it, it's, it, it, it needs to be, that, that sort of investment needs to be regulated by the FCA. What I help people with is, is getting a fixed rate of return, so a loan. So they are, they are private funders. But the way that right. works is that they um, often want to have an insight into the project. So they want to, it works the best with people who want to get into property investing for themselves at some point in time. But for now, they want to make a loan, get a rate of interest on that, but sort of test the waters really to see what it, because what we offer is an insight into the project. So. Uh, our private funders. So I call them private funders, not investors. The, the, the private funders, they will come to our projects, they'll have a look, they'll have an open day, we'll have some lunch, but they can actually see the bricks and mortar behind, uh, you know, what we talk about. So um, it's, it's really a, a useful day for people who want to know a little bit more about what's involved, you know, to actually see uh, a, a co-living room, for example, which has an ensuite and some kitchen facilities, etc., to physically see what it looks like. And uh, often it has been the case where they've had the opportunity to actually talk with tenants as well. You know, as if someone's there, they're quite happy to share how, you know, um, of, of how, what it's like being a tenant. And, and, uh, and once I went for, with a mentee to do a viewing of a room and, and we had a really good chat with um, a, a new graduate who's going to take up a room, but he's father as well. So it was a really useful sort of insight into uh, tenants and, and tenanting and and uh, and of course development, you know, because people love seeing things being made, you know, the bricks and and, and the cement and and, and sometimes the, the rubble behind a uh, a property project. So yeah, so with the funders, what actually happens is that they often and what's happened in, in my case is that we've often gone and developed that relationship further. So they might have become a joint venture partner. So that's when you come in together and and share the risks and rewards, but. By then, you know that person and you've built trust and they've got the trust in you to do a larger project. So that often happens. Or what typically happens, and, and in the vast amount of people that I work with, they um, take the interest, uh, take the repayment after 12 to 36 months, and then go again. They'll invest in another project because it's a source of income then. And, and, and uh, we've built the trust and, and, and the, uh, the, the goodwill with them to keep going on and, and, and doing, doing more projects. Because on the on the numbers side of it, um, 
which I, 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 I know you mentioned, but I like to draw attention to, on the numbers side of it, you you were a chartered accountant, and that's your mm-hmm. trade as such, isn't it? So yes. working out the numbers on this is something that you you grew up doing and you've actually trained to, to be that person. Well, that's right, yeah. I think that it, 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 with what I'm doing in, in the uh, property uh, business, whether it's investing for myself or uh, helping other people create portfolios, I think with my background, it's created a lot of credibility. So I, I trained as a chartered accountant with, with KPMG in, the, in their Birmingham office. And um, that created a great network for me as well. Of, of you know, of, um, One of my uh, uh, JV partners and, and who originally started as a funder, for example, was um, a colleague of mine you know, 25 years ago at KPMG. So it's, it's, it's created a lot of credibility for me because I think it's important to present the numbers because if you're going to, and, and I take this very, very, very seriously and, and you know, it's, it's on my mind a lot about my private funders that I've got someone's hard earned cash and I've got to, you know, make it work even harder. But what are the numbers behind that and what are the risks behind that? Um, and, um, you know, my primary aim is to safeguard that money. And the way that it's going to be safeguarded is to invest wisely, but also create a bigger return than what I'm paying out on it. That just sort of makes you know, commercial sense. Because the reason why I say that is often people get milled into having really high payoff um, interest amounts. You know, I want to invest this uh, money for 12 months and I'll pay you 50% back, you know, 50% interest back. And I'm thinking that how on earth can you afford to pay 50% interest back to someone after a year? This must be like the deal of the century. And, you know, I'd, I'd either like to know more about this deal and see if I can do some of them as well, or I don't think it's realistic. You know, and, and so the number, understanding the numbers behind it is very important. And also, like I said, it's very reassuring for people um, that I've got a financial background and, and, and I will get that right. Yeah, because most... As from someone who was an estate agent for twenty years, most property purchases in in the UK certainly are emotional. People are buying because they want a bigger house. They fall in love with the house. They fall in love with the area, and even if they're something like a job move, they settle on that house because it feels right to them. But when you're investing in something, it's important to set the emotion aside, isn't it? And and look at the the sort of hard cold numbers about it and I guess that's that's what you help people to understand yeah n- n- no absolutely and, and the people that I uh, work with often I find my job often is to control the emotions uh, you know a- aside to everything else um, because yeah I, I do feel unemotional about it because every day you get things that um, are obstacles you know and you just can't be you can't afford to be emotional about all, all of those things or be angry you know you might get a um i mean i'll give you an example um a system might be delayed with something or they might ask you for the same information again or uh a, a, an estate agent has um uh, said that that offer you know they effectively pull the offer from you and say that you know that's happened to me in the past as well and from for a joint for a joint venture partner who's not been it for as long as me might ring me up and they might be screaming and shouting and you know and I will sort of say to them look it's it's just a, an investment property <laughs> no one's died uh we need to move on and and uh, so they said I, do I have to send this information again I've already sent it twice I said just send it three times it's easier to send it a third time than for us to be talking about it now for half an hour um yeah <laughs> there's a very lot much of that, that mindset as well yeah I, I just think that you need to sort of Find out what the obstacle is and solve it as quickly as possible. It does get frustrating, but you know, I, you're right. You can't fall in love with with a uh, with an investment property. Um, I think you need to fall in love with the concept uh, of what you're trying to do. Uh, and for me, um, the biggest thing that I really love is creating shared houses for young professionals because I just like uh, working with young professionals. I get to know their parents. Uh, they're often in a first uh, graduate job after you know, leaving university. A lot of my uh, tenants that I'm living in my shared houses are uh, working, for example, at Jaguar Land Rover or one of the large construction firms working on HS2 
or they're in uh, they're, they're in the police force or the, the civil service lots of different graduate jobs and it starts off with lots of apprehension you know you normally meet a parent or a couple of parents who bring in uh they, they're uh, you know they're often kids really you know the 21 22 years old in their first job and uh, the parents still very much see them as kids and once they realize that a the quality of the accommodation is very good and b they've got someone like me around and our maintenance team and and and, and the other people as well in the house who are all of a similar um you know situation they suddenly realize that this is going to be like a fantastic place to leave their child for for a year uh, until they move on to say year two of, of a program it might be somewhere else in the country and then you do it all again and often those people um will become my linkedin friends you know and, and i follow their journeys as they um uh, move up their corporate ladder and uh, funny enough a lot of them actually become print customers <laughs> they'll, they'll introduce me to the the, the print or their marketing manager at their their, their um the firm and so it is a really sort of like print and properties it goes hand in hand with me um, and this is why I like working with business owners because I know that it'll, they'll turn full circle with their business and their property and, and it just one will feed the other and you know whether it's in terms of results or systems and processes um, it's very interchangeable and and so yeah I you know just to summarize what what I'm trying to say is that I don't fall in I'm quite unemotional about the process but very passionate about the concept of what i'm trying to create i love that I, I we just like we always do whether we talk privately or whether we do it publicly raj we've we've talked for ages and i probably um probably ought to to, to wrap this up in a second but i love the fact that you're passionate about it and yet you're able to be unemotional about each individual deal that that really sticks out are there any final points that, that you want to make this afternoon before um before we let everyone who's watching get on with their work yeah so i mean just to summarize and i guess so a few comments about should i invest in property you know if you think um if you think property is a way of uh creating something for the future you know sort of future uh, store of wealth if you like or uh creating more opportunity for yourself in terms of time and, and, and achieving some of your goals, or like myself, giving something uh, for your children, you, you know, building a nest egg, building something for, for your children or, or, or other family members, then I think, yes, you should invest in property. And there's opportunities in any um, environment, in any economic environment, if you do the right things, if you follow the right advice, and if you're interested, the first thing that I would say is join a uh, property uh, networking group. I think it's very important. You know, and, and uh, I'm part of Partners in Property, but there's a lot of different property communities locally. So I would join a community. I would start getting some ideas and, and uh, a feel of things because, you know, things people might be holding off for investing now, but things will change in six months and we will be... Uh, changing again in 12 months and there's always constant change but the sooner you can start at least you you've got a head start on uh, next year for example and you can start uh, you know you can start making a plan I will say people get very keen to sell their properties in December um, people get very worried about Christmas and can't see past it so I do know there will be properties out there that people are keen to to secure a buyer for before the end of the year um, and if if you want to get involved in property go and connect with Raj I've I've put a link to his LinkedIn profile in the comments already thanks Raj thanks for Brilliant. spending so much time with us this afternoon I always enjoy talking to you that's why we always chat for a while I'm yeah. going to do this I'm going to bring myself back here thank you Raj for spending so much time with us um if you're not connected with Raj, make sure you go and do so. I'm going to go and press the button, which switches us off. I'm going to talk for a second because it always takes LinkedIn a few seconds to, to switch us off. I will be, um, I'll be back later on in the week and I'll be back next week live again. Keep an eye out for it. 